Hello, I'm Ken Coles and welcome to this week's Plot Shots with Farming Smarter. We're actually in Leduc County testing one of the really cool projects that we've been working on. Uh, Dr. Mike Harding is leading this and, and with a group of dog trainers out of New Brunswick. Bill and Mario are here with their dogs, Josie and Addie, and we're actually field testing whether they can identify club root by smell. So kind of a, a crazy idea that Mike came up with, but in the clinical trials so far, it's been proven that they can easily identify the club root dolls. And, and now we're actually out field testing. They've, they've done a great job at pulling out some, some plants that definitely have decaying club root galls. So that's what we're looking forward to today. And we're gonna have a quick interview with, with Bill and Mike. Um, so I got a call from some guy named Mario Bork a couple of years ago, asking uh, about the possibility of working together to train dogs to smell uh, a disease in potato and tomato. And I, thought about that and thought, well, it's not really maybe going to be very uh, applied here where we don't have a lot of late blight. But the thought came to me that we do have club root and we can't see it because it's underground, but maybe the dogs could detect it without having to dig up all the roots. And so that's how we got started. That's when we called you, Ken, and partnered with Farming Smarter to get this project off the ground. And we started sending uh, scent material, clubbert scent material to, to Mario and Bill. And they did all the clinical training with the dogs and have proven beyond any doubt to me that dogs can definitely detect clubbert balls. Um, and the field testing yesterday and today I think has gone really well. They've, uh, we've learned a lot about what the dogs uh, can already do with the clinical training that they've had. And we've learned a few things that they have struggled with because they haven't been shown yet how to do it. So um, it's been a really interesting project seeing dog training and plant pathology come crashing together. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's also interesting that one of the dogs is a rescue dog that was going to be euthanized and is now a working uh, scent animal. And uh, yeah, it's been a project that's just been a lot of fun to work on. Because who, who doesn't like working with dogs? This is one of those projects that is, has kind of been like a springboard for uh, I think what could potentially be a lot of really useful applications. Uh, so the first is that um, we've learned, I've learned that dogs can be trained to detect more than just one thing. So if, if there were other diseases, especially diseases that are under the ground or hard to recognize visually, um, you could train a single service animal or scent animal to detect club root and fusarium head blight and aphanomyces and blackleg or verticillium wilt or whatever it was that you wanted to, to detect. So, um, you know, that's, a, that, that's something that could spring out of this, is training dogs to detect multiple diseases. Um, the second is that uh, we, we're pretty sure that the dogs can not just recognize the club root galls on the roots, but that they could be trained to recognize the club root resting spores in the soil. And so uh, it'd be really easy to check a piece of equipment to see if it was clean, if the dogs could detect low levels of club root spores in soil. Um, and, and when you think about the, the amount of sanitization that could be eliminated if the dog checked the equipment over and found it to be free of club root, um, there's a lot of value and I think savings for companies that have to do or farm operations that are doing a lot of sanitization. So, you know, that, that's a couple of the things that have come across um, that have kind of sprung out of what we've done that I think would be real interesting to look at. My work over the years for close to 60 years has been training dogs and specializing in scent work from explosives to low blood sugar for diabetics to uh, drugs to all kinds of things that imply with, with scent and he came to me and between him and him talking to, to Mike he came to me with a request he said Bill do you think we could uh, train a dog to detect 
club root? And I said, absolutely. But what is club root? <clears throat> so I know we could do it. So we arranged uh, through Mario and through Mike to get samples of the product, which we call now defined as target scent. And we trained uh, the dogs. So first we got to find a, a highly active, exuberant, young dog that uh, wants to please. So the search began on that. Mario had his own dog, which had fit the criteria. I have a Labrador which fit the criteria, but we needed one that was uh, brand new, so to speak. So we got one uh, golden doodle from the uh, rescue group uh, that was slotted to be to put, disposed of, and uh, we used that. And with the samples of material that uh, was sent to us, we started teaching the dogs to indicate it by touching their nose on it, by barking, by digging, and uh, basically you start clinical training. You, you do it very systematically. The dog indicates it. He's rewarded. Uh, you do it at uh, different times during the day. He indicates it the way we want. He's rewarded and it becomes habit in the dog. Um, once we've got that level done, we start to put it into practical. We start to go in the field with it. The next step is to bring it out into the fields out here because we didn't have club root in New Brunswick that we could work with and I don't think there was anybody that is in the farming industry that would have volunteered for us to bring club root down to practice to train with. So the next step was to come out here. These dogs hadn't flown. Uh, it was new ground to them, uh, new, new stimulus. So we knew that we were going to have to regress to be able to go progress. Uh, the first day, it went okay. The dogs indicated it. There was distractors around. It was a different area, but they were successful. Maybe if you don't mind, comment on how much time it would take to properly train the dog and the handler and, and just the general cost. Well, based on uh, to train the dog and, and handler, based on my experience with being contracted to train a narcotic detector dog or a bomb detector dog and then and then sending a handler to me to be able to work with it in a, in a, a viable operation. I would say three, three and a half months to train a dog, four months max, uh, and then probably 10 days to two weeks to train a handler to the level that they could actually utilize the dog. And they would both be rookies, as we talked before, they're rookies, and the rookie has a valuable uh, is a valuable tool, but it, it increases in value as it gains more experience. But yeah, I think in, in the rookie stages, you could put them out into the field and become very efficient. A scent detector dog from a quality and reputable place is gonna cost you thirty-five dollars to $40,000. And then you have salary of your employee, then you have the equipment, you have your upkeep of the animal, you have the upkeep, uh, the kennel that has to be built. All these different things can be there, and that's easily uh, obtainable. Would you mind describing, earlier you mentioned that there's uh, the low-tech approach, but you can also add in a high-tech approach for, for the scouting. Well, we it was innovative with us because um, I deal with a company that makes uh, innovative electronic collars, and we use electronic collars in training, just like we use GoPros and GPS's and things. So there are collars out that track GPS movements of the dog. Um, we put that into use and put GPS collars on the dogs and we can actually now print out uh, an actual defined area of where the dog covered. So if he was covering 10 acres today or 8 acres uh, today and you printed it out it would be able to come across your boss's desk and saying, you didn't cover the northeast corner of this. You didn't cover this part. Um, we want to saturate this coverage because we not want to be able to, we want the dog to know, or we want to know that the dog has been in the area where the product might be. And those are limited by uh, the wind currents, uh, the environmental factors. So there were some naysayers on this project that thought that it was kind of a loopy in the air crazy type project. After the, the number of months that you've worked on this already, what would you say to that? 
I would say the naysayers should see the, what we've done so far and then, and then see if they're still going to say nay on it because I can't see anybody coming back saying, no, these dogs are not ready to work the field. But the possibilities are there that it could be done. Right, and that was the intent of the project. It was more of a proof of concept and without a doubt, I think we've proved it. And would you agree with that? I agree with that. And I think when we got to the question, it was, can we detect can we train a dog or dogs to detect the scent of club root? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you. Well, I'm uh, Aaron Van Beers. I'm with Leduc County. I'm one of the uh, agricultural fieldmen for uh, Leduc County. So my one of my main aspects for work is the uh, the club root industry, uh, the club root inspection program. So uh, we have a club root inspection program for Leduc County where we inspect every field of canola. Uh, we, we pull plants in every field, depending on the uh, amount of galls we find, we keep track of that and we, uh, we deal with it from there. It's, it's actually a very fascinating project, um, just seeing the dogs coming out to, uh, to, to walk a field essentially and, and be able to identify a, a spot where, where we already know there's club root is, is pretty cool. I think, there's a, I think there's definitely a lot of uh, potential with a project like this. If, if they have the animal that can detect it, it, it can make the process a lot easier for inspections. For us down in Southern Alberta, we're still sort of in the, the heyday of, of, it's not there yet. Yeah. And I'm wondering like, do you think this would help us in say earlier detection and being able to manage the problem even better? The, the dogs, I yeah. think would be a huge benefit for that. If, if, it, if they can detect it at a low level, I think that would be a fantastic way to, to get ahead of the, the game. Uh, for, for our municipality, uh, we have a lot of fields that already have club root and, and some are at a fairly, fairly intense level, uh, high, high spore loads. So we're, it's, I don't want to say it's too late, but we're in a different management mode than, than you guys could be. So I think that uh, a project such as this, where you can go out into your canola fields, um, and, and have a look before it becomes a problem could be a huge, a f huge way to get ahead of the game and start maybe deploying your resistant varieties before that, before it becomes a real problem. A number of the other ag fieldmen were kind of interested in it as far as the enforcement side of things, as far as cleaning equipment and dealing with, say, oil field people and all that. Do you think that's also worthwhile? I think that could be a, a huge worthwhile. Maybe not necessarily in terms of enforcement, but just to give that peace of mind to producers who, who have been very leery of, of oil and gas industry coming onto their property because they don't know where that, that equipment has been. And we always encourage our producers to, to have something in place with those uh, oil field companies about sanitation. So that it should be clean coming into the property and it should be clean going off your property so that it's, it's an ease for the neighbor. But if you had a dog that could detect spores at a certain level, to just inspect that before that goes out, the peace of mind that a, a producer would have, or even before it's coming onto your property, the peace of mind would be huge. And it would be a way to, to really ensure that any company, regardless of whether it's oil and gas or perhaps even if it's the fieldmen going in and out, making sure that, that you're clean. Right, that that you're not a part of the problem. That you're you're helping to to keep the, the risk at a minimum. Well, thanks for hosting the tour. <laughs> and no problem. It. Anytime. Thanks. <laughs>